Ghana is touted as an example of democracy in Africa. Despite this, it is not the most technologically advanced when it comes to voting. The introduction of the photo identity cards in 1996 represented a significant advancement in the country's electoral process. This helped reduce the incidence of false representation and gave more credibility to the electoral system. Now, there is the advocacy for a more improved way of carrying out elections using electronic voting. Advocates believe that electronic voting will stop theft, destruction, staffing of ballot boxes, and eliminate incidents of sports ballots to zero, as well as prevent multiple voting, thereby reducing violence. Democracy is expensive. Anything that we can do to enhance the integrity of the electoral system, let's do it. With e-voting, within a matter of four hours, we can have the results from across the country declared. Electronic voting embraces both electronic means of casting and counting votes. The system improves accessibility of disabled persons to voting, speeds up counting and saves the Electoral Commission the cost of printing and storage. While the Electoral Commission of Ghana is to begin the compilation of a new voter register using biometric means, some fear the challenges of time, logistics, funds and unresolved issues of cross-sector coordination may still frustrate the implementation process. The problem really is with the registration of the voters and not um, the voting exercise itself. If we do the biometric registration, we are sure that we'll be able to remove the multiple registrations that uh, we experienced in the past and then we'll have a more accurate register. Electronic voting may be considered sometime in the future. I cannot tell whether in the near future or sometime later. The commission admits that it may face challenges if it is to switch to electronic voting. It also urges caution given Ghana's illiteracy rate in ICT tools and frequent power outages. However, Gabia Sariotri Dakun thinks otherwise. There are more illiterates in, 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 in India than five times the population of Ghana. If the illiterates in India can use a computer to vote, why can't the illiterates in Ghana use a computer? If it's going to be e-voting, instead of thumbprinting, you're just going to push a button, you know, beside the picture that you want to vote. He called for a user-friendly system with a verification machine that can authenticate and determine the eligibility of voters. Countries like Brazil, Venezuela, USA, Netherlands, UK, India, and a host of others have experimented with this system. On the contrary, according to AfricanElections.org, no African country has tried the system full circle. Rather, some countries like Malawi, Uganda, Cote d'Ivoire, Namibia, and South Africa have gone some way forward in their electoral process by using ICT to bring efficiency and effectiveness. Electorates in Malawi and Uganda now go online to check their voter registration details, whereas those in Cote d'Ivoire and Namibia use mobile phones instead. Electronic voting may not be all that rosy. It comes along with some imperfections as well. One of the possible disadvantages is that electronic failures might occur. A typical example of a system malfunctioning was during the 2000 U.S. general elections where an anomaly in the machine led to a candidate ending some negative results. Again, e-voting is not as secured and secret as the present paper ballot system. This is due to the fact that the older generation may not be comfortable in using the system. An ICT consultant says infrastructure may be the underpinning factor for the start of the process and have called for human capacity training in e-voting, computing resources and more importantly, education for ordinary citizens to understand the process involved. Electronic voting may be cheaper in the long run if the country is in good shape. The point you have to note is that to start e-voting, you need to invest in a lot of infrastructure. But your initial investment is going to be very huge. By the end of the day, you're going to have certain benefits. So I will not say that electronic voting is cheaper than paper-based. They all have their costs and benefits. And the only way to ensure that you select the best option is based on your environment. Clearly, the goodwill or support for e-voting is strong in some quarters, but not in others. Rebecca Iwa, GBC24.